My name is Rhonda McKnight, and I'm the author of the upcoming Brown Girls book, Shame on You. I love Christmas time. As you can tell, I keep a hat on easily accessible every year. I am a uh, winter baby, so I don't even mind the cold. This is my absolute favorite time of year. Uh, I don't even have to go back to my childhood to find my favorite Christmas memory. I am originally from New Jersey. I've lived in Atlanta for 19 years, and uh, my parents continued to live in New Jersey uh, up until about seven years ago. Seven years ago, they relocated to South Carolina uh, to a town that's about four and a half hours from me here in Atlanta. This was really exciting to me because during that, I guess, 12 years that my parents were in New Jersey and I was in Atlanta, I really only got to spend Christmas with them three times. And so I missed my parents at Christmas time. So when they moved four and a half hours away, me and my family, my kids, the dog, we packed up and we went to my parents' house and we had an amazing Christmas family reunion with them. Um, we took pictures, we made videos, we exchanged gag gifts and of course other gifts and we cooked and we sang and laughed and just had a wonderful time. It made that Christmas very, very special. And of course, since my parents are only four and a half uh, hours away, I get to spend Christmas with them every year. And that's a blessing to me. But that seven years ago, when I really got to reconnect with my parents at Christmas, that was the most exciting and wonderful Christmas memory that I'd ever been blessed to have. And so I wish you and your family or the people that are close to you a very merry, safe, and blessed uh, Christmas and holiday season. Hi everyone, this is Leslie J. Sherrod wishing you a very merry Christmas and a happy new year. This is one of my most favorite times of the year. I remember being a child and waking up so excited on Christmas morning, but now as an adult, I have the greatest joy in spending this time with my children, my husband, and the rest of my family and being able to offer that same joy to them that I felt as a child. We have so many family traditions around this time, whether it's just watching all the Christmas movies while sitting on the couch curled up with hot cocoa or going over an aunt's house to play a number of fun and funny Christmas games. But one of my most special memories at this time of year is several years ago, our family and I had the honor and privilege of taking my almost 80 year old grandmother to a Baltimore tradition, which is our own miracle on 34th Street. There's a section of row homes where the neighbors have agreed to do one of the most extreme light displays that you will see anywhere in Baltimore. The entire street, even overhead, is just covered with Christmas lights and it's jam packed full of traffic and everyone is getting out of their cars and going into the houses. And my grandmother had shared that even though she lived in Baltimore all her life, she had never been there. So that particular year, we did get a chance to take her, not realizing that that would be one of the last Christmases that we were able to spend with her. So when I think about Christmas, I think of memories such as that. A lot of my memories are tied to family and family traditions. And it brings me such joy just to think of those things and and be able to share them, and now to be able to share those reflections with you. Again, I hope you have a great Christmas and a wonderful, blessing-filled new year. Merry Christmas. My name is Terry J. Haynes, and I am the author of Captured with Brown Girl Fate. My favorite Christmas memory happened in 2011. It was the year my husband was deployed to Afghanistan. He left in January, and so we weren't expecting him back until the following January. Then we got word that he would be coming home early. We planned a party, we decorated the house with yellow ribbons, and we were ready for him to come home. Then we got word that due to some processing issues, he would not be able to come home, possibly for another week. So it became the ultimate road trip. My husband was in Georgia, we were in Maryland. Within an hour of hearing that he wasn't coming home, I was on the road to go meet my husband. I cannot tell you the joy that I had seeing him again after being separated for so long. And it ended up being the best weekend because it was just me, him, and our children. We got a chance to reconnect before he came back home. And it was just the best Christmas gift. So, Merry Christmas to you. I pray that God will bless you abundantly in this Christmas season. Hello, my name is Vivian Kay, and I'm the author of Secret Places, a Brown Girl's Faith book. 
this Christmas, my wish is for peace, uh, joy, and health. Peace in the middle of everything going around me. Um, joy that nothing can take away from me, that no circumstance can take away from me. And health because I really can't enjoy anything without good health. And, um, and just because I do need a brand new car, so that would be one of my wishes as well. So if you do have a good relationship with Santa Claus, please put in a good word for me. I would really appreciate that. And so from my family to yours, uh, have a very Merry Christmas and a prosperous and healthy 2016. Hello, my name is Shana Burton and I am the author of Kiss and Tell. And I'm here with you today to share with you my favorite Christmas memory. My favorite memory had to have occurred when I was around seven or eight years old. It was 1984 and we were at the height of the Cabbage Patch Kid craze. And of course, like most little girls and gender confused boys, the only thing I wanted for Christmas that year was a Cabbage Patch Kid. And I remember a few days before Christmas, my mother came and sat me down. She was like, Shaina, look, we have been all over the state, all over Macon, all over Atlanta, Columbus, trying to find you a Cabbage Patch doll. They are gone, it's just no more. Come up with something else, find a plan B. You know, so I took it all in stride at that time, at least in front of her, because I knew deep in my heart, despite what she said, somewhere in the United States, there was one more cabbage patch doll and I was bound and determined to get it. So, you know, I went to my room, pulled out my pen and paper and wrote Santa Claus a passionate, heartfelt letter, reminding him how good I'd been that year. Um, I also told him about my cat that my mother killed and the fan bed of her car and how I did not ask for another one after that. I reminded him of all the teeth I lost and that the tooth fairy neglected to bring me money for. And I ended the letter with telling him if I did not get a Cabbage Patch doll that I was going to no longer believe in Santa Claus. Now, truth be told, my imaginary friend had told me years ago that there was no Santa Claus, so I didn't believe. But my mother didn't know that. So I left the letter out where she could find it. And I don't know how it happened. I don't know if she had to sell a kidney. I can only pray that she didn't have to whip out Mother Nature's credit card. But come Christmas morning, Francie Nicola was under the tree. And that was my very first Cabbage Patch doll. And I was just thrilled to pieces. You know, outside of being happy about that, it also taught me two things. Taught me one, if you can write well, you can get pretty much anything you want. And two, it taught me that a little manipulation can go a long way. And anybody who tells you otherwise, they're just not doing it right. I probably just killed all of my credibility as a Christian author by telling you that. Uh, but nevertheless, I uh, hope you enjoyed that memory. I enjoyed sharing it with you. Have a wonderful Christmas and a fabulous new year. Bye. Hi, everyone. My name is Michelle Lindo Rice, and I am super excited to be with Brown Girls Books. On January 12, 2016, my first novel with the Faith imprint line, Tell Me Lies, comes your way. During this holiday season, I wish for you love, joy, peace, and happiness. But I also urge you, if you have a loved one that you haven't spoken to in a while, how about you leave that electronic alone and give them a call? I also urge you, if you know of someone who's lost someone, reach out to them. They may be a little lonely during the season, but mostly if someone has hurt you or done you wrong, I ask that you forgive them. Isn't that what the season is really about? So I wish you a safe and fun filled time, but I also ask that you remember someone who may be in need. Have fun, enjoy your holiday, and I wish you a happy